Welcome back to Bob's Magic Emporium. Next video on the 365 Day Magic Challenge. Today we got a teach a trick for you today, and it's a really good one. This is the, uh, it's a basic effect, in, or it's a basic principle of magic that a lot of card magicians know, but I'm going to teach it anyways, because some people don't know this, or some people know it, but they don't use it. The key card principle. It is an amazing pr uh, card principle that lets you do some really cool magic tricks, honestly. This is just a foundation, though. This is supposed to be where you can build your own routines using the key card. I'll show you a real basic routine you can do with the key card principle, but you build your own routines with this key card principle. And if you know what this is and you thought, this thing's kind of dumb, I have seen some really amazing card tricks that utilize the key card principle. You can look up Miss Mag A22. Some of the card tricks he does, he says, you use the key card. So let me uh, go into a routine with the key card. So um, here's what's going to happen. You get to choose any card that you want. So we'll say you choose this one because there's no spectator here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, look at the card for the purpose of the demonstration. Normally, I wouldn't know what it is now. So the spectator gets to cut the cards, place the card right on top, and we'll give it a couple more cuts like this. There's that, and there's that. Okay. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to try to pick out which card. I want you to say the card over and over in your mind what your card is. So say it over and over and over in your mind. And I'm going to see if I can pick it up. This one. No, 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 no. Not that one. Not that one. You're not, you're not giving me enough information. I think it's this one. All right. I think, I think that's the key. I think that's the card. All right. I'm not going to change my mind. I'm locked into this. Let's see. Five of clubs. All right. This is a really basic magic principle, like I said, but it, 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 it's fooling. It fools people. If you have good patter and a good presentation, the key card will fool a lot of people. Um, it's not really a magician fooler unless you have a really, really, really good uh, pattern or story with it. It's going to fool. But like, just if you do something basic like I did, it's not really going to fool magicians. But it's going to fool laymen, though, because they don't know the move you're doing if you do it well. If you cover your moves, they're not going to know. So here's the key card principle. The key card principle works by, I'm going to get a good card on the bottom. You memorize the bottom card. Okay, in this case, it's the Ace of Hearts. But you want to memorize the bottom card. And there's a couple ways to do that. One, you can just uh, spread the cards out on the table like this to show they're all different. Or you can uh, uh, spread them in your hands or you can fan them on the table like this. Um, I don't like to do that, though. That's my least favorite way to, to memorize the bottom card because you can see the faces and, and the spectator might accuse you of memorizing the order. So... I don't do that. Another way you can do it is when you do a riffle shuffle. You just take the um, the card and you thumb off one card, the card you're memorizing, or you, or you look at the card like this. You turn it upwards, you look at it, you thumb it, and thumb a few more, and then keep going until the deck's exhausted. You can do that. My favorite way to do it, and this is such an easy way to memorize the bottom card, you just turn your hands over as you're talking. So don't do it like this. Don't do it like this and hold it, just talk, and as you talk, jester, or just, I, can't, I always want to say jester, jester, just like this, jester to your audience, and you just flip it over nonchalantly, glance at it, don't stare at it, don't go, uh, and don't, go, you know, just glance at it, turn your hands back over, you memorize the bottom card, anyway, just memorize that bottom card, or you don't even have to do anything, you can put your favorite card on the bottom, an easy card to remember, ace of spades, or ace of hearts, or queen of hearts, whatever, and just have it already preset, whatever you want to do, but uh, you can do it though, if you have the spectator shuffle the cards, and let's say they mix up that bottom card, so now it's completely lost and mixed, and you know, you just, that's an easy way to remember it is flash the cards like that. Let me get an easy card back to the bottom. All right, for the demonstration. All right, ace of spades, good? Okay. So you uh, can spread the cards out on the table. This is, I'll show you the basic routine that I did. You can spread the cards out on the table. You, if you don't, if you can't do the ribbon spread, you can always just fan them in your hands like this. So you can, you know, kind of uh, like that, something like that. So spectator chooses a card. They look at it. 
Now, um, I'm going to look at it too, so I know what it is, Jack of Spades. So, uh, they look at the card. You don't look at it. Though. You, you can turn your back, which is great about this trick. And the key card principle, you can have your back turned, and you can have your spectators doing all the moves, which is really, really cool. The spectators can do all the moves, which I, I like. So uh, you, you cut the cards. I cut the cards. You can do it another way, though, but I cut the cards. Their card goes right back on top of this pile, and the bottom half goes square on top of that one. So basically, the key card is going to be, um, you find your key card, which was the Ace of Spades. It's going to be the card that sits right on top of it. So in this case, we know that we know that their card was the Jack of Spades, so it's the one that's going to sit to the right of it, to the right of the key card, or the one that sits right on top of the key card. So this is all about acting. So you got to have really good acting skills or really good pattern because uh, you. Oh, before I go into that, though, let me also talk about you can cut the deck at this point. Don't riffle shuffle. Don't shuffle it. Cut the deck. Do one cut and complete it. Simple as that. And the key card will stay in its original. The Their card will stay next to the key card. Now, one thing about this, though. Let me find the, uh, let me find the card here. I got to find the card. Wait a minute. I think I just made it vanish. That's, that's lovely. <laughs> um, no, it's in here somewhere. Let me find the card. Let me find the card. 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 There it is. Okay. So if they happen to cut, if you do a cut and you complete it, it'll always work. If you happen to cut right at the key card, okay, if you happen to cut right at it, so I'm gonna hold a I'm gonna hold a break here. So if you happen to cut right at the key card and you turn over and see the key cards on bottom, you know the top card is gonna be theirs. Now, if you happen to cut right exactly at the key card which is really pretty cool. If you happen to cut right at the key card, you could do something kind of amazing with that. So like you could, um, I got to get it there. There we go. So if you cut right at the key card, you can do a pretty neat magic trick with that because that will be a trick in and of itself. Having their card, you could say like jump back to the top or something like that. As long as, let me get the deck back to where it's supposed to go. As long as you complete the cut, so don't do anything like this. Don't cut the cards and then cut them again. Don't do that. Just complete the cut. The key card will stay where it's at. Or it'll end up like, I did not plan that. That'll end up on the bottom and then their card will be on top. So let's put their card somewhere in the middle of the deck so we can really, I can show you the rest of the presentation. So what I did is normally if I do this for a spectator, I'll have them look in my, look in my eyes. And I'll look in their eyes and I'll say, over and over, say the card in your mind. And I'll look in their eyes, look down at the deck, look back at their eyes, and I'll keep going. And then I'll pull one card out. So I'll get about halfway, pull one card up. I won't show what the card is. I'll just pull it up just like that and I'll say, I think this one's your card. And I'll start to put it on the table and I'll say, no, 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 you didn't pick this one. That seems too obvious. And then I'll find their card and I'll say, I think this one is more you. And I'll put that on the table. I'll put the rest of the deck off to the side, like really off to the side, like like exagger exaggeratingly far off to the side. And I'll say, I'm locked in. I can't change my mind. I can't, I can't, I'm locked in. Let's see. And I'll turn it over and it's their card and they go really, really crazy. Uh, again, magicians won't get fooled by this. Unless you have a really good pattern or routine with this, then you might get away with fooling some magicians. But this is really cool, though. It is the uh, key card principle. Really, really great effect in magic. Um, really, really great principle, too. So definitely go ahead and check that out. And think about using this in your own show because, you know, it's, it's great because you can use a normal deck of cards, even a borrowed deck, and do a magic trick if you know the key card principle. So hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you tomorrow for the next magic challenge video.